Stephen A. Smith Show starts right now. To the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show, coming at you as I love to do every weekday over the airwaves of ESPN Radio and ESPN News, 250 plus markets across the United States of America. Check your AM FM listing nearest you, plus ESPN Radio on Sirius XM, Channel 80, plus ESPN Radio simulcast over the live national television airwaves of ESPN News. Number to call up as always is 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. The Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Cars, homes, boats, motorcycles, RVs, and more at Progressive.com. Time for Straight Talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Look, lots of stuff to get into today. Le'Veon Bell, New York Jets, I'll get to him in just a few moments. But there was a game that took place on Monday Night Football last night. My my boys Joe Tessitore and uh, Boogie McFarlane called the game as they do every Monday night. And it was really, really interesting to see what transpired. Case Keenum throws three interceptions after spending the first two games throwing five touchdowns, not a single interception. Case Keenum threw uh, three interceptions last night, fumbled the ball twice. The Chicago Bears were all over him, all over him. Khalil Mack is just that dude. Ain't no other way to slice it. He's just that dude. Plain and simple. Um, You just look at them right now, and clearly the Chicago Bears appear to be the class of the NFC North. I mean, when you look at Mack, Trevathan, Roquan Smith, Floyd Fuller, I mean, uh, Prince of Mukamara didn't let somebody try to jump over him. He just simply backed up. We saw that. Eddie Jackson, ha-ha Clinton Dix. Look at this defense. Front line, behind, back end, doesn't matter. At every single spot, from your defensive line to your linebacking group, to your safeties, both free and strong, to your corners, Chicago's defense is elite. There is no doubt about that. But we can't ignore the ineptitude of the Washington Redskins. We really, really can't. Even with McLaurin having six receptions for 70 yards, the bottom line is this. The Washington Redskins are just not a very, very good team. You can talk about them being saddled by injuries all you want to. Their leading rusher after three weeks is Adrian Peterson with over 60 yards. Their leading rusher is Adrian Peterson, who's got about 62 yards rushing. What is there to say? Case Keenum is completing 69% of his passes, but the bottom line is, is that what are you going to do? I don't give a damn about his 332 yards passing. Those three interceptions mattered. They were down 28 to nothing. Put three points on the board before halftime. Thereafter, you know, tried to act like they were mounting some kind of comeback. This was a blowout. This was a blowout. And when we look at the NFC North, we look at Green Bay, Chicago, and Minnesota, particularly in Minnesota, because they look like a totally, completely different team with Dalvin Cook coming out of the backfield for them. You got Aaron Rodgers completing just 61% of his passes. Got a QBR of 46, and Green Bay is undefeated. Who would have thunk it? Because they got the number two ranked defense in all of the NFL right now. And Chicago is clearly elite. Defensively, that is. Every time I look at Chicago, the one thing that jumps to my mind, the one thing that permeates my thoughts is this. What if they had drafted Patrick Mahomes or Deshaun Watson 
instead of literally moving up in the same draft to grab Mitchell Trubisky. What would this have been like then? Oh, my Lord. It would have been something special. But it ain't to be. Statistically, they've got the number three defense in the entire NFL right now. They're behind the Green Bay Packers. Statistically speaking. And in reality, after losing the opener to Green Bay 10-3 to because their offense couldn't do a damn thing, they beat in Denver, escaped from Denver with their 16-14 victory, and then blew out Washington last night. Now they're going up against Minnesota this Sunday, which is going to be a big-time game at Soldier Field. Can't wait to see it. But somehow, some way, if you're Chicago, you know you're not going anywhere unless Mitchell Jabitsky steps up and gives you something on the offensive side of the ball. You ain't going anywhere. Nothing's going to happen. It is what it is. It's inescapable. And still, we look at the Washington Redskins right now, and the reality is that this team is just not that impressive. They're 30th in the league in, in, in defense and points allowed. They're 29th against the rush. They're 20th against the pass. They're 26th in yards allowed. And yes, like I said, Case Keenum is completing 69% of his passes. But we all know he's a journeyman quarterback. He's really a glorified backup. Let's not fool anybody here. We know what time it is with Case Keenum. And then when you take into consideration what you saw from Daniel Jones this past Sunday for the New York Giants in Tampa when he brought the Giants back from a 28-10 deficit and they ended up winning the damn game because they at one point they had outscored Tampa 22-3 in the second half. What do we have here? I'll tell you what we have. We have a situation where the Washington Redskins and its fan base is clamoring to see Dwayne Haskins. You know that quarterback out of Ohio State who started to play one season and threw for 50 touchdowns? That dude. And some people are sitting there saying, Stephen A., don't, 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 don't sit up there and have these expectations. That's what they're saying. Daniel Jones is suddenly better than Dwayne Haskins. Maybe he is. Because I got news for you. Daniel Jones surprised the hell out of me with his ability to run with the football. He's got good size. He can make all the requisite throws. We know that. But the wheels that he has on him, as he proved by scampering for two touchdown runs, those wheels puts him in a position where there's no reason to look back at Eli Manning again. His career in New York is over unless Daniel Jones gets hurt because Eli can't run and could never do what this kid can do. And because that is the case, you have a different situation. Now, to my eye, even though I saw the placement of the football by Daniel Jones being exemplary, I also saw a few Giants receivers wide open against Todd Bowles 3-4 defense where he was blitzing you all day. I also saw that. And before Saquon Barkley got hurt, he was on the field with them. And kudos to Pat Shermer, who I never thought should be the head coach of the New York Giants, but he did a damn good job last week, and he definitely did a damn good job in coming to the support Daniel Jones being in the starting lineup at the expense of Eli Manning and not waiting any longer. So credit should be given where credit is due. Oh, by the way, Daniel Jones, number two selling jersey in the NFL behind Patrick Mahomes. This past week. Hey, let's let's, let's give credit where credit is due. But now if you're the Washington Redskins, you know if you're Jay Gruden, you're going to hear this more and more. Dwayne Haskins, Dwayne Haskins, Dwayne Haskins. Why why isn't he in the lineup? Put him in. Let's see what he's got. Why? Because if the Giants got their new franchise quarterback, where the hell is ours? That's what the Redskins are saying. And by the way, I don't blame them. Because if we're really being honest about it, How much more do you expect these people to put up with? I mean, can we really be honest here? The Redskins have five Super Bowl appearances and three Super Bowl titles in franchise history. But I got news for you. They haven't won a Super Bowl since 1991. Oh, I'm sorry. They haven't been to one either. 
Oh, I got more news for you. They haven't been to an NFC championship game since 1991. Oh, I got more news for you. Since 1991, that is literally 28 years. The Redskins have been to the playoffs five times. Five times. Five times. In 28 years. What the hell you expect people to feel? You got sit up there. I don't know if it was Jonathan Allen or somebody going to some uh, profanity laced rebuttal with reporters yesterday about people counting them out and, 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 you know, don't love us now. Don't love us later then. Don't love us later then. Well, when have you given them anything to love? I mean, what the hell is going on here? You don't win a Super Bowl, I understand. You get knocked off, I understand. What possible excuse can you have being in the nation's capital with an owner like Daniel Snyder who, if nothing else, throws his money around? You've got all the necessary resources available. There's been plenty of times we looked at the Redskins and we've seen talent. And you got five playoff appearances in 28 years to show for it. And you got an attitude with the public, with the media. Don't support us now. Don't support us later. What have you given them to support? Inquiring minds would like to know. I mean, no disrespect, Jonathan Allen. I'm just asking. I'm just asking. You got to be kidding me. You don't see why people will have an attitude with you. You got to know to have attitude with other people. You lucky folks don't have an attitude with you. Washington Redskins have one of the worst rushing attacks in all of football, by the way. With Adrian Peterson on their roster. Love him. Good brother. It's almost that time, if not that time already. 30th ranked rushing attack in the entire NFL. Got the New York Giants, a road game at the New York Giants this Sunday, game they should win. Then after that, they, 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 they host the New England Patriots. Then they play the Miami Dolphins. You can make a legitimate argument that the Redskins should win two of the next three games against the Giants and the Dolphins. But with this team, we don't know what they're going to do. And therein lies the problem. Let me state this for the record because I just want to get this off my chest. Jay Gruden shouldn't last the season. I'm going to say it again. Jay Gruden should not last the season. I mean, no disrespect. Not not trying to take money out of a man's pocket. Not trying to impede one's ability to feed their family. I know I wouldn't want anybody to do it to me. I, I, I mean, no disrespect. I truly don't. But Jay Gruden has had long enough. He's had six years. And for those of you who want to sit up there and say, well, you know what? They were six and four before Alex Smith went down against the Houston Texans last November, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what? Is there a big difference between Alex Smith and Kirk Cousins? I don't think so. Jay Gruden was seven and nine the year before. With Kirk Cousins. And eight, seven, and one the year before that with Kirk Cousins. Jay Gruden has had ample opportunity to turn this team around. And the fact of the matter is, he hasn't. And I'm going to say something most people don't want to say, but it's the truth. We all know that Jay Gruden really got the job because of his last name. I'm sorry, it's just the truth. I believe it to be true. Too much nepotism going on in the National Football League. Too many people getting hired because of the connections that they have. And, you know, people looking at them and saying, well, we like this guy, blah, blah, blah. But the reality is, if we're really being honest, if we're really being honest, if Jay's last name wasn't Gruden, would he be the head coach of the Washington Redskins? Would he be the the head coach of the Washington Redskins this long? 
I don't think so. I don't think so. The season is not even a quarter old, and already it's perceived by over 50% of the Washington Redskins fan base to be over. Except October hasn't even arrived yet. The Thanksgiving holiday is damn near two months away. And people are already saying, we're toast, we're done. That's a damn shame. And at some point in time, you got to be willing to give other folks a chance, not just the folks you're comfortable with. Got to be willing to give folks a chance. 888-SAY-ESPN, that's 888-729-3776. You are listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Somebody's got to say it. Somebody's got to say it. And I'm not going to lie to you. I think it needs to be some fresh blood. Y'all going to think I'm crazy. I look at my man, Lewis Riddick. I, I, pre- I, I pre- appreciate the fact that Dave Gettleman looks good right now with, with Daniel Jones as the quarterback. But what if he had kept Odell Beckham Jr.? and then allowed Daniel Jones to be inserted into the lineup this early. And so Odell and Saquon with Daniel Jones would have been out there. What do you think it would have been like then? So let's not throw some parade for Gettleman. I personally believe our very own Lewis Riddick should have had that GM job. I look at places like the nation's capital. I got to admit to you, I see guys like my man Ryan Clark or Keyshawn Johnson talking about football. I wish they were running football teams. They'd have better judgment of talent than some of the stuff we see out here. Jay Gruden's been on the job for six years in, 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 in the nation's capital. In the nation's capital, Chocolate City. Chocolate City. And that brother can't even provide vanilla ice cream. I'm speaking metaphorically, of course. Find a way to to, 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 to assuage the concerns and to stimulate your fan base with something. Let the taste buds just taste something, something to look forward to. Y'all like that ice cream analogy? I did. I mean, it's just, it's got to the point where enough's enough. Enough's enough. I'm just seeing folks around here just lose it. Keeping their job. But we're going to talk about Mike Tomlin like he needs to lose his job, right? Men's won more regular season games than everybody since Bill Belichick. But he needs to lose his job. We're going to rave about Sean Payton like he's the second coming. Mike Tomlin's been in as many AFC championship games. As he's been in NFC championship games. He's been in more Super Bowls. He has just as many Super Bowl victories. And oh, by the way, he ain't missed the playoffs anymore than Sean Payton did. But Sean Payton, the genius, Mike Tomlin got to go. We here in New York City, the Mecca, the media capital of the world, Gotham City. And these organizations have given us Pat Shermer and Adam Gase. Really? Really? Go out west. I'm proud of the Rams and what they're doing. Sean McVay is that dude. Anthony Lynn, mad respect to him. Even though the Chargers lost yesterday, Sunday. Oakland Raiders, John Gruden, $100 million man. An additional $18 million in, in incentives. Getting rid of people he won't want. Bringing in people he do want straight off the television. I mean, Mike Mayotte, no NFL experience whatsoever. Not as a coach, a player, a player personnel guy, a scout, nothing. He the GM. GM. I mean, you can't make this up. You can't make this up. So I'm going to hold down the fort here because all I want is fairness. 
We talk about Ron Rivera, how he need to go in Carolina. Cam ain't healthy. What that GM over there do to put the talent on the field with Cam Newton when he was healthy? But Ron Rivera's on some hot seat. Jay Gruden's employed. And I got news for you. Jay Gruden ain't going to lose a job because guess what? His brother's in the league. How much you want to make a bet? If all else fails, his brother will bring him to Oakland before he got a chance to pass gas. This kind of stuff that's going on, too much nepotism, not enough demand for productivity, holding fan bases hostage while you go out there and put forth one subpar product after another, after another, after another. And nobody says a damn thing. Well, I'm going to say something. I'm going to say something. I never felt like Jay Gruden shouldn't last the season before this year. Kind of feel that way now. People chant for Haskins last night. Because they saw Daniel Jones. And now they say, well, hell, Daniel Jones did that. Let's see what Haskins got. Since so many people were saying Haskins should have been selected before him. And Jay Gruden sitting up there saying, no, we owe it to Case Keenum. Let me repeat that. We owe it to Case Keenum. A career journeyman, glorified backup, one good year as a starter in Minnesota. Went to Denver, couldn't get it done. Now, he in the nation's capital. Only because Colt McCoy went down. And Alex Smith is out, and his career might be over for all we know. We don't know. And because Case Keenum there, who's incredibly accustomed to being a backup, by the way, we got to make sure we continue to start him. Unreal. Unreal. 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. That was Straight Talk Wireless, everything for less, only at Walmart. By the way, we'll get into a little college football a little bit later because uh, another coach that should be on the damn hot seat is Jim Harbaugh. Look, God, Lord have mercy. I watched the first half of that Wisconsin-Michigan game Saturday night. Talk about getting shellacked. Jonathan Taylor had 143 yards and two touchdowns in the first quarter. In the first quarter. Got to talk about Jim Harbaugh a little bit more. I will be doing that with Paul Feinbaum to start off hour number two. Plus, I'm going to get into Kansas a little bit. NCAA sanctions coming down the pike. All that and more. Plus, I'll get to your phone call, so don't touch that dial. And, of course, I'll get to the Jets and Le'Veon Bell as well. Stick around. Don't touch that dial. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. By the way. By now, you've probably heard me talk about my computer career and think, nope, not me. I don't know the first thing about computers. Well, that's okay. You don't have to. Before they started, many of their graduates could turn a computer on and off. And that's it. Now they're IT professionals. And you can do it too. 